Let's take a moment to recall a few things about even and odd functions, and then we'll discuss how this relates to our Fourier series. So to start with, we have the definition of an odd function, the idea that if you evaluate it at minus x, you get negative what you would get evaluating it at x. So if we were to think about a kind of generic illustration, if I know my function looks like this from 0 to a, then for an odd function, we would expect it to look uh, like this from minus a to 0. So then if I were to think about the integral here from minus a to positive a, then we can see that the area that we'd be looking at um, is going to include this area, which is negative, and whoops, this area, which is positive. And those areas would be equal, and they would cancel one another. And that's why we would get 0. If f of x is even, then instead we see a different kind of symmetry. And we say that f of minus x equals f of x. So again, if this is my function from 0 to a, it would look like this from minus a to 0. Symmetry um, across the y-axis. But once again, if I were to think about the integral here from minus a to a, we would have equal areas on either side of the y-axis, but they would have the same sign. So instead of canceling out, we can say that the entire area is really double the area from, say, 0 to a. So one last connection to kind of think back on is that um, what we know about even, or excuse me, co cosine and sine. So not just cosine of x, but really cosine of kx is even, and sine of kx is odd for all of these integer k values that we've been considering with our Fourier series. So if I think back now to my coefficient formulas, which involved integrating certain functions, we can come to a nice conclusion. And before I jump to that, I want to briefly think about what happens when we multiply even and odd functions together. Um, so multiplying even and odd functions. It's not the same kind of result as multiplying even and odd numbers. So if I start with the assumption that I have f of x is even and g of x is even, then if I want to think about the product of these two functions, well, if we want to check if that's even or odd, we can use our definition. So um, below this here, what happens if we plug in minus x? Well, because both of these are even, plugging in minus x to, to each of them would result in the same thing as plugging in positive x. So what we get here is that the product is likewise going to be even. If f of x is odd and g of x is odd, and yet again, we want to consider what we can say about the product. In this instance, if I were to plug in minus x to both functions, because they are odd, that's going to be equivalent to negative f of x times negative g of x. But here the negatives cancel, and yet again we just get f of x g of x. So it turns out that multiplying the two odd functions together, we still get an even function. And then finally, the last to consider is, what if one of them is even and one of them is odd? And then we consider their product. So if I go through that same kind of derivation, here, f is even, so f of minus x is just f of x. g of x is odd, so g of minus x is negative g of x. So we get negative f of x times g of x. That's what an odd function satisfies. So it turns out that we get an odd function when we multiply an even and an odd function together. So what does this have to do with Fourier series? Well. The consequence is as follows. So if 
the 2 pi periodic function we're starting with, f of x, if it is odd and we are finding its Fourier series, what we can immediately assume is that a sub 0 is 0 and the a sub k's are 0 um, for all k. Which this means um, that no, there are no cosine terms in the Fourier series. So one way to kind of re remember this here is um, an odd function. We're approximating by a bunch of sine functions, which are likewise odd. If instead we know that f of x is an even function, that would mean that b sub k is 0 for all k. And this means that there are no sine terms in the Fourier series. So this is going to be the thing to kind of remember here. And it's not that this is necessary to evaluate Fourier series. What this will do is this will allow us to more quickly find the coefficients and really be a, more a statement about efficiency. And then the last thing I want to consider here to make sure it's clear is how did I jump to this conclusion from what we talked about? Well, we have to think back to our definition of these coefficients. So um, for one, we said that a sub k is um, the, int well, one over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of a product. And that's f of x times cosine kx. Now, if we know that f is odd, remember that cosine is even, then f times cosine would be an odd function times an even function which above we said was odd. And if the whole product is odd, then the integral of an odd function from minus pi to pi would be zero. Here you can think about pi as playing the role of a when we talked about our integration balance above. So if f is odd, that's why the a sub k's would always evaluate to zero. If instead we focus on b sub k, that's going to be the integral from one, uh, 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x times sine of kx. And again, what we want to remember here is sine is an odd function. So if we start off with the knowledge that f of x is even, then it would be that f times sine is a product now of an even and an odd function which we said was odd. And again, the integral of an odd function from minus pi to pi is zero. So that demonstrates why the second bullet point tells us for even functions, it's the b sub k terms that evaluate to zero.